what is up guys so today's another day and it's also another side job day so we're getting to work on this Tacoma right here uh, did a couple of things first being popping out this big old dent here it was a huge dent in there and uh, this guy had asked me to pop it out a while ago and I was like eh, I don't know if I'd be able to do it but just looking at it now I thought you know I probably can so I just gave it a whack or two from the inside pop this right out it looks a lot better than it did I don't know if I'll be able to fix this one but uh, yeah, I don't think we can get to that. But anyway, that's irrelevant. We're going to do the drum brakes on this thing today. So I'm going to go ahead and got the wheel chalked already. I'm going to jack the back of this thing up and we'll get started on these drum brakes. So we got the wheels off, which is the easy part. Uh, this thing is a six lug or 21 millimeter. Um, make sure you get the right brakes because I know that there is a five lug and a six lug version of this vehicle. So I happen to know that this one was the six lug. So I ordered the correct brakes. But uh, yeah, we got new drums and we got also new shoes because I don't have the ability to cut these drums here. Otherwise, we probably would because they're probably in decent shape. But, uh, you know, we could always save them for him and see if he wants to keep them or something like that. But in this scenario, we're just going to replace them because that's the easy thing to do uh, when you're doing this at home. So the hardest thing is going to be to take this drum off here. So we got to probably beat it with a hammer. So I'm going to go try to find something to smack it with. And uh, we'll try to beat it around the uh, center hub here because you can see it's sort of corroded around the hub and it'll tend to stick there. So if we can't get it by beating it, there's a couple of threaded holes here that we can screw bolts into. Not sure what thread pitch it is, but we'll find something that fits, like a little 10 mil or something, and uh, use an impact and just work it back and forth to uh, you know push it off of the actual shoes because there's a lip that develops in here as it wears on the inside and then you have to get that lip over the shoes as they've come outward. So that's the tough part. So we'll try to get this thing off and I'll show you guys. I already had the other side off because I inspected it maybe, uh, I don't know, six months ago or a little bit less. So that side shouldn't be as bad, but we'll see how it goes. So unfortunately my uh, nice four pound sledge is at work and uh, I'm not going to work this week. so. I'll end up using this guy right here, which is probably the heaviest thing that I have. And it's a dual purpose. You know, you can go chop a tree down after you're done. So we'll see if this will do it. I don't know. I don't think so, guys. We're gonna have to hit this a whole hell of a lot harder, but I do see it's breaking around the hub, so we are getting there. I may use a little bit of penetrating oil around this guy. So, decided to work smart and not hard. The hammer didn't seem to be doing the trick for me, so I got uh, 12 on a impact gun, got it on low, and uh, I got another socket here for the other bolt that I found, just two random bolts that fit. And I'm just going to keep working this thing from both sides. I may go up one notch here. And then I'm going to work it from the other side. And it definitely helps if you could just go back and forth here. And you can do this by hand too, but uh, impact is definitely the way to go. And you don't need this, this kind of power. Oh. And then, uh, and then you can snap one off in there, which is definitely something that could happen. I thought I was getting it, but that is unfortunate. Guy, that's really sad. But we did get it off, so uh, we should. Uh, you do want to be aware of that, that you could snap it, and that is what happened to me. So we'll have to get that out now. Thankfully, we can uh, get to the other side. But uh, yeah, we'll just take that out with some vice grips there but that's uh how you do that so now we have it off and his brakes don't actually look that terrible but yeah we are gonna we're gonna do it up for him and do some new brakes all right so now that we got that drum off uh, i remembered we got new drums to put on it anyway so that does not matter um that we broke that thing off in there but if you were keeping it uh you would have to take that out which you could just grab it with vice grips like i said but it turns out I was going a little bit too hard on that one and it was a really small bolt and we snapped it. Not the first time that's happened to me, but uh, it's tough to realize how much force you're putting into it with the impact. But 
we're gonna go ahead and pull this guy apart I do see that there is there is some you know some wear right here we're, we're pretty close but you know these definitely could go longer but he just wants to change them for peace of mind I think but we got brand new stuff over there nice fat shoes so we're gonna go ahead and dissect this thing I think we're gonna start down here taking off this lower spring if you can see this guy I'm gonna pop him off and that should release uh, the first mechanism here I'm not uh, too familiar with drum brakes I've only done them maybe once but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot see how I see how it's all put together so what I decided on was the best way to do this was to completely do one side and then I could show you guys the other side and that way I would know what I was doing because this is my first time doing drums on I think it was my first time anytime doing drum brakes on a vehicle um, so I think maybe I did the ones on my Honda but those are simple these are a little more intense but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side right now so first things first what we're gonna do here I'll try to uh, get some light in here this spring is gonna come off and that's gonna remove uh, that's gonna come off of this guy right here which is metal you'll see it when it comes apart but this is the ratcheting mechanism for the uh, adjuster up top so this keeps it from spinning the incorrect direction it'll only tighten so we're gonna pull this spring off pull this guy out and we'll be able to get access to that so this is that part right here uh, this is the ratcheting part up top and this is that spring I was talking about that heads down to this hole right here in the bottom section I'll shine my light on it that hole right there so um, the really good thing to do is what you definitely want to do is make sure that you do one side and leave the other side all assembled so that if you do forget how it goes which I did mess something up on the other side I can come over here and reference this side and see how this side goes so it's best to get everything off of both sides get a good visual and then you can have this side to reference um, or both drums off of each side rather and then you can have each side to reference so don't take both sides apart at the same time or you might find yourself in trouble and then maybe that's why you're watching this video and in that case hopefully I can show you how it goes because I was able to do the other side so now I know how it goes and I left the other side together for comparison if I do need to reference back but yeah next thing we're gonna work on here is this big spring here and this is a tough one you guys want to make sure you're wearing eye protection because if you slip with these uh, and you put these guys in your eye you're not gonna have a good day uh, especially now whole corona situation don't want to be in the hospital for any reason uh, whether it's pliers in the eye or you know not so any reason whatsoever no hospital anyway I'm gonna go ahead and do this I have these and a couple other pairs of pliers and stuff you just got to try to work at it and pull it in this direction pull it out of this hole and uh, hopefully you guys can see that the gnats are eating me up might get a little bit of bug spray going on but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and bust that guy out and then we'll move on to the next step all right so I got this big guy up top off which is good and the other guy that I need to get off is this guy down here and let me get my light but yeah this guy down underneath we'll take it off of uh, looking at this guy right here yeah we're gonna take it off of this side uh, it's easier than doing this side this side will come off much easier afterwards it's like a little cotter pin looking thing we'll pull it off of that side first and then the other side and then that whole plate will come off uh, we don't have to take it off but I will and I'll show you guys that so that is that mechanism right there there's that spring that we took off of that side and that goes uh, this other end goes through the pin and the pin goes through that hole in here and this end of this guy is he fits in with all of the little areas on here hopefully you can see in there with the lighting yeah all those guys in there so basically he fits in there and then goes over to the other side and sits on that pin uh, that is right here so uh, then this little cotter pin thing snaps around there and it locks that thing on that pin uh, and Then the next step is we're going to remove these guys and there are special tools for these But if you look at it, you can see how it goes It's like a little cap on a spring So you got to push in and spin it and then this flat guy will allow you to uh, Slide through the slot and then the whole thing will come off. They make a tool for it But you could just use a pair of vice grip pliers Make sure you don't squeeze it too hard because you'll you'll bend that little plate so just enough to clamp and then you can push and twist and uh, might need two hands to do this just be careful you don't jam your knuckles on anything but you push and twist and this guy will come off so I'm gonna do both of those and then we should be ready for this whole assembly to uh, fall off for us
What's that? You gotta put that part on the new one? Yeah, take all this stuff off and put it on the new shoe. Mary Ellen told me her girlfriend. <clears throat> she said she thinks she bought... You can see I have the whole assembly off here. And we had this spring right here. went from uh, here to here. And so we took that off. And we got this whole assembly here. You can pull this guy off. And we are going to uh, pull this all apart. So we gotta get these clips off here. So I use a combination of pliers and a screwdriver to just gnaw at these until I get them off. Because we have new ones right here. These little horseshoe clips to squeeze on over there. So we just gotta pull these two off and then this whole assembly will pop off. We can take our spring off and get this whole assembly all cleaned up to go into uh, our new brake shoe system. So it took a little bit of working, but we ended up getting it off. All right, got off the second guy. Now we can pull this shoe assembly apart, pry it off of there, and this top one comes off. We'll set it aside, and then we can see our spring assembly. It's all right here, and this spring, uh, this guy will pull out, and this spring will come out. This spring goes in this hole right here. So we'll make note of that. That's where that guy goes. Set him aside over here to be cleaned. And this is the lower piece right here. So we'll take our shoes and uh, we'll match up our old shoes with the new ones. So we know that this one is this one and this one is this one. And we get our old shoes out of here. So now we know we're all set here. So just go through and you know clean off all the brake dust off of this stuff. You don't really have to brake clean it. Uh, it's pretty clean already, not too bad. Depends on the condition of everything. So that's the lower piece, and here's the upper piece. And we're just going to, you know, tidy up. And this guy too, so we'll clean up this spring here. And uh, this whole mechanism too, all these threads can be cleaned. Make sure that all this is nice and clean because you want to be spinning all this. So we'll take all the brake dust out of the threads there. And if you want, you can use a little bit of uh, brake clean. This is carb cleaner, but same deal. So, got it cleaned off like this. And then uh, it's always good to get a little bit of grease and we'll grease this guy up so we'll get some on the threads here and a little bit on this and then when we go ahead and screw this guy down which it is reverse threaded so when you're screwing it down you're going to want to screw to the left actually the other side is reverse threaded on the car and this side is regular thread because you know it goes the opposite direction on the vehicle so that makes sense so right side is going to be regular threads and the other side of the car is reverse threads so i know we can probably be backed out to here it'll save me some adjusting um backed out somewhere around here actually i think it might make it easier to get the shoes on if we turn it all the way down i just know that we got to crank it out once we get it on so we'll leave it like that and uh that's that's how this guy goes so we'll clean off these other parts over here and get everything ready Go back on springs and such and then we're gonna go ahead and clean the whole backing plate section get rid of all the brake dust in there All right, so now we can begin the reassembly. So with these shoes here, we know that we have this guy underneath. So we're gonna get him going on another here and it goes in this big hole here. And then this other guy will go on top like this, but we have to first put 
our spring mechanism into this hole right here and line up our fork, um, which is like this, and line that up. And then we can get this other guy on. All right, so uh, it's gonna be like this. Once we get it all together, we're gonna go ahead and grab our new little horseshoes here. And we're gonna go ahead and bend them on. You wanna make sure it's right before you use these because you could mess it up and then you won't have any of these. But uh, yeah, you wanna make sure that the fork goes in and goes around the rear piece, and but obviously behind this piece and the spring is on this side uh, on the outside of the uh, shoes here. So we'll put our little horseshoe around and then we can go ahead and squeeze it. So I'll go ahead and grab my pliers here, give it a good squeeze. All right, so I got them on. This guy kind of tore a little bit. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but I think he'll be okay. And this guy should be fine as well. Um, yeah, as long as I don't mess with that anymore, it should be okay. It's a little beat up, but this guy's definitely solid. So we'll leave it like that. The other side I was a little bit happier with, but sometimes things happen and I kind of killed the old ones. So we're ready for our next step here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to fit this guy on. And uh, that's the fun part, doing all that stuff at once. And uh, I did get this all cleaned off, so we're nice and ready here. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this e-brake cable through the bottom here. And that'll help us out uh, getting to our final destination. So one thing you want to make sure of is you got both of your top pieces here. There's slots up here inside of this, these pistons. You want to make sure that you A, don't push those slots all the way out in either direction because then you got to put them back in and you got to bleed the whole system. So not only do you want to make sure you do that, you also want to make sure that you uh, have them vertical still because they can rotate. And if these don't line up and stick in the correct spot, you will be in trouble. So if you push these down, you can... Look in there and make sure that you are still lined up, which I'm gonna look in there and I can see we're in the slot and we're in the slot on both. So the toughest part is stretching this spring, uh, this big yellow spring here from here to there uh, and making sure that this guy falls into that slot. That is the toughest part, but I figured that this could go in first and then I could stretch it from this one to this one and then I'll put this guy in after. So that uh, other green spring is kicking around here somewhere and I will right here put him on here and then go ahead and put his thing on as well and then we can get both sides done here and uh, then we'll get this guy put on on the bottom that spring here and I'll show you guys that too and then we'll just keep progressing with this but we are almost done so your next phase here you want to have this guy in there and you just want to shoot it behind this tab right here and in line with this and then it'll fall onto this right here and then you put your pin on from the back side and then you can come over here and use a pair of pliers to stretch it and get it on right there so then you're all set with that and then the only thing we have left to do is the ratcheting guy which slides in from the top up here and it sits on that pin right there if you drop it in there you can just put it on like this and then this tab has to go behind there like such and in the slot and we're looking pretty good so then all we got to do is put our spring on which goes from uh, it goes in this direction and it'll stretch to this hole here so I'm gonna do that now easier to do by myself and then I'll take a little bit of sandpaper scuff off these guys really quick and then I'm gonna adjust it out some the adjustment is uh, up top you can see our little uh, tooth gear there let me get my light. Yeah, you can see our little tooth gear there, so we're gonna adjust that. 
and uh, the adjuster should move with it, but you'll see how we do that in a sec. Alright, so I got that guy on, so now I'll show you guys the adjuster. If we use a screwdriver to spin it like this, you'll see that from the top like this, you can hear it ratcheting. And what that's doing is pushing the brake shoes outwards. And we gotta keep doing this. I know the other side took a while. So you get, basically you do this, and then you try to fit on your brake drum. And you see how tight it is. And the tightness that you want, I'll show you guys on the other side. We got good tightness over there. Basically, you want the drum to drag. I'll show you guys on this side, our drum, there is tension. It's tough to turn. It won't spin freely, right? So that's good. That's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to pull this side off so I can go ahead and adjust the other side and have that side be the side that's spinning freely. But this kind of resistance here is what you want. It'll drag for a little while and then it'll wear in and it should ride nicely and uh, his brakes will activate exactly when he wants right away. If you don't have them adjusted correctly and they're way too loose, it's going to take forever to get your rear brakes to engage. Your fronts will engage first and then your rears will follow. But if you do it like that, you'll get that good rear engagement uh, when you need it. So that's the best uh, way to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this side off, start throwing that drum on, and we'll see if we can adjust it. You want to make sure that you clean the drum first because rotors and drums always come with some oil on it so they don't rust during uh, shipping. So we'll make sure we spray the whole inside braking surface here and clean it out with a clean rag. And then, uh, like I said, I'll do a little bit of sandpaper on the outside here of the shoes, make sure there are you know, no burrs or anything like that. Hit the edges, it'll make the drum go on nice and easy. And then we're just gonna keep adjusting and we'll put it back on until basically until you can't spin it anymore. And then we'll pop it back off and it'll be really tough to get the drum on and off. You'll see, I'll do a little time lapse, but you'll have a tough time getting the drum on and off. And that's how you know you're getting pretty close. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys are fully uh, 90 away from the hole on these so they don't pop out. But yeah, we're looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get that drum on. And uh, I know this is going to need more adjusting, so I'm going to go ahead and get to it. Alright guys, so this side is now adjusted, it's pretty tight, tough to do with one hand, but uh, may have to loosen it a little bit, I'm going to see uh, what I think in a minute, maybe take it off one more time and loosen it just a tooth or two, but we're looking pretty good, and this is pretty much the whole process guys, it's really not too bad, I know drum brakes can kind of be daunting, you get in there and you're like, what are all these springs, what does any of this do, but if you take it apart piece by piece, and don't shoot any springs in your eyes. It's not too bad. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, no courtesy. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And uh, this guy's going to be moving down the road with some new brakes pretty soon. So, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.